Hello, my name is Isaac Rosenfeld. I'm part of the Outpost team. And in this brief tutorial, I'm going to show you how to place your first Outpost's order. As with many of the AWS services, the journey begins by going to the management console and selecting the region where you'd like to be deploying the service to. Outpost service has its control plane in the region and the actual equipment does reside on your premises. And so in this case, I'm selecting the central region here in Canada, and I'm going to go to the Outpost service here to begin the process of creating my first order. There are three steps that I'd like to walk through that are involved in this process. The first step is identification of a site. This is where the site ship to address, the location of where your outpost is going to be. The next step is picking an outpost ID or a name that you'd like to give to your outpost and associating it with an availability zone from the list of those in the region. And step three will involve selecting an outpost configuration from the outpost catalog and attaching it to the outpost name or the outpost ID that we'll be creating in step two. So this diagram here really illustrates all of the things we're gonna do. First, we're going to establish the site, then we're going to create a logical outpost, and then we're going to populate it with a configuration. Without further ado, going into my left hand pane here, expanding it, creating a site, involves going through a number of questions. These questions pertain to physical attributes of where we're going to be shipping equipment to. Like other AWS services, the actual billing does not start until after the capacity has been marked active for you. And so we'll be engaging with you very closely once the order goes in to validate the order by going into your site, validating the premises, making sure that the selections that you've made are sufficient for us to bring out the outpost to you. All of these questions are best addressed in the Outpost User Guide in the Requirements section, but I will make a few comments here pertaining to some of these. There is a General Facility Clearance Requirements question that essentially gives you an opportunity to confirm that the Outpost can physically be hosted in your environment. The next question deals with certain physical minimums, such as minimum power or maximum weight that you can support. We can provide bracing equipment at no extra charge, and this becomes really important if your location is in a seismically active area. When dealing with power, we want to know how much primary power will be available in this position. I'm going to select a value in the case of this example. I'm also going to now select uh, a number of values for these questions. You do have an option to inform us whether you prefer single phase or three phase power and depending on these selections various power connectors will be available to you. We want to understand whether the power feeds are coming from under the cabinets or above the cabinets and whether you'd like to provide redundant power. All outpost configurations come with support for redundancy for networking and power, but it is really up to you to let us know whether you will be providing that or not. Moving on to the networking section here, I'm going to select some values and based on those values, I'm going to be provided with a number of options. When discussing numbers of uplinks, this is a reference to the number of uplinks for each outpost networking device up to the demarcation point that connects to your switches on premises. So a minimum of two really is required because that contributes to a total of four. And that's going to be the minimum redundancy that we uh, recommend. The next section here deals with a uh, name for your site. I'm going to call it my first site. Uh, you could provide a description. You can provide a number of optional notes. We generally recommend that you provide a name for your facilities, contact, phone number, email, whatever you'd like. The reason we need this is because we're going to use this information to schedule the next step, which will involve a site visit, where we'll work with you and your facilities personnel to come out and look at the site just to make sure that everything is ready and our team will subsequently be able to provide a, an excellent service uh, with uh, uh, the site experience. My first very unique description here. I'm going to click the Create Site button. And now that my site is created, I have a site ID. We're going to use the site ID as part of our internal automation workflows. The next step is to go into the Outpost section and create your Outpost. This involves creating a name. I'm going to give it my first Outpost, an optional description, uh, test for app one, 
and availability zone that corresponds to a list from those that I have in my region that are available to me. And then I'm going to select a site ID where I'm actually going to be hosting this outpost. We did this in step one. And having done that in step one, I'm going to now select the site from the list of sites. And I'm going to confirm this by clicking the orange create outpost button. Now I have an outpost ID which begins with OP. The next step is to go into my outpost catalog and select a configuration. Let's say I'd like to have this one here. I'm going to place the order and I'm going to select a payment option. In this case, I'm going to say no upfront payments. I'm going to click next. I'm going to use an existing outpost that I previously created or I could create a new one. Obviously, having done the creation of an outpost in step two, it's already pre-populated for me here. This will give me a quick overview of the entire order as it looks like so far. And I'm going to click the place the order button. As this is generating, I am going to see what the entire process looks like. As you saw, we did this very quickly in a matter of minutes. Once we receive your order, we're going to reach out to you and a member of the AWS team will coordinate a site visit. You'll be able to track the status of your outpost order through your management console using this OO as your outpost order ID. And the billing will not start until after we've handed over the capacity to you having marked it active. That usually occurs within a week after the physical delivery takes place. All of these questions can be answered and assisted by your AWS representative. Thank you for watching and please reach out with any questions that you might have.